Hi Andy, great to see you. Yeah, it's been a while. I think it was June, wasn't it? It was a wee while, just last, last year. year. Wow. That was right. This is quite a unique situation where you have a particular skill that I think a lot of our listeners will really benefit from. So do you want to just uh, start us off with telling us a little bit about your background, um, yep. what you did pre-property? Yeah, um, so pre-property, I uh, spent 20 years uh, with the MOD. Uh, I was in the Air Force. Um, and spent a lot of time working initially um, in sort of Northern Ireland doing kind of public order, police type stuff. <clears throat> and then I branched out to Intel. Um, I did Intel in all the kind of conflict zones. So uh, Iraq, um, Afghan like six times. Uh, and then I wanted to do something different. So I did Intel overseas uh, with embassies instead of like uh, conflict zones. So I did like defense attache work. Um, mostly in Eastern Europe, and did that for four years, and then wanted to get out uh, of the MOD to have a sort of UK-based life um, and spend more time with family, and uh, you know, kind of pick up from there. And uh, I moved into uh, my house in Wales, which is hopefully going to be an essay quite soon. I'm <laughs> uh, And then my nephew uh, Ben, uh, who lives in Norfolk, uh, he'd started listening to podcasts on the way to work. He's a mechanic. Uh, vehicle technician and he was just like filling time uh, and he was quite kind of interested in property his dad's a builder had some investment money uh, that was potentially could, could be used and he said hey look you know this podcast is talking about a three-day course with PWS um, I can bring somebody along uh, do you want to come along uh, so I was like okay yeah fine let's you know do some learning uh, so I did the, the weekend uh, set an investment area of Hull. <laughs> nice. um, yeah, uh, did some, did a lot of work up there. And then Liz Trust changed a few things for us. Uh, the numbers started to not work. Uh, and me and Ben started to look at uh, potentially SA properties in North Wales, where I live. Um, and we are, well, we've had an offer accepted and we're just waiting for the legal parts of it to go through for a two bed um, holiday let. Um, in in train with my own house I'm sat in now which is a four bed which will be a holiday let as well which isn't necessarily on our portfolio but the same principles apply right yes. um, get those and then I'm pretty sure that his his dad who's invested in another one uh, is happy to roll the money through for another one so our plan um, after our once one with uh, Nick and Sarah last week is to build a portfolio here Brilliant. Um and they were great. They actually um, got us to look at guest houses and hotels in our two day as well. So we kind of, we explored, you know, where you can go, you know, how big you can go and just, just, to, just have a look around that and start to see the models and the plans that you can, you can start to think about for, you know, going bigger. So you have attended a course through your, your work that yeah. is of uh, real relevance and interest about building rapport and, and I guess, negotiating and, and working with people. So talk yeah. us a little bit through what you learn on that. Um, yes. Yeah. So my, my job now is uh, with law enforcement. I'm a trainer. Um, so I train people in uh, like sort of in, Intel techniques. Uh, and one of the courses I did was a course called the Observing Rapport Based Interpersonal Techniques, the Orbit course. And it's a four day course where they teach you to build rapport when it's difficult. On a good day with a vendor or an estate agent, you can have a nice chat. Um, yeah. But I think sometimes those days aren't always good, um, especially if you see quite a few in a day. Um, so I thought this was useful uh, to kind of work out how you can approach, you know, a kind of maybe a feisty vendor who won't go down, won't go below a certain sort of like offer price or an estate agent that might just you know not be as useful as you want them to be so yeah. there's just different techniques you can just have in the back of your mind that might help you when you're doing your sort of 80 20 80 percent chatting 20 percent looking type thing yes you're viewing yes a lot of our students they're so paranoid when they start out about actually offering too low and insulting the estate agent and worried mm -hmm. about what the estate agent's going to say. But actually, when you approach things with the way that you're going to, to talk us through, it, it should hopefully help with that, that fear. So what was the principles that you learned on, on this uh, course, which sounds fascinating? Well, yeah, um, I think the main thing is that you, you can't just jump into a conversation and, and expect to get what you want. So you're going to have to build some rapport. You know? So one of the things that we do is active listening. 
Um, so we're not waiting just to talk. We are listening. We're writing notes. You know, we're scanning the conversation for where we can, you know, actually input. Um, we're going to nod. We're going to empathize. You know, we're going to build that rapport. We're going to look at people, you know, in the eye and sort of engage with them as opposed yeah. to just looking at the house. Um, we're going to take things in ex exter um, internally, you know, store it, write it down. And then externally, we're going to react well and we're going to ask the right questions at the right time. Okay. So it's that, that piece there, active listening, it's probably what everyone does, but it's just putting a label on it and saying, hey, you know, when I approach this, like for me and Ben and our one-to-one, -one, we, at the end of it, we did have a stock set of questions that we'd got from Nick and Sarah because they're really good questions and they're not, they're, they're quite open. Yeah. They're, not they're not closed questions. Um, so listening properly before you sort of like speak uh, and then... If, if someone's good, then it, you can ask those questions and it works. But if it yep. doesn't, then, you know, you've got, you're going to have to use your rapport-based um, uh, skills. And it's called, <laughs> right, this is called the wheel of communication, all right? So if we just go with, we'll just make this simple. In my training, and I think it's quite similar to what we had on the PWS as well, people will tend to be certain types. So in this wheel, you have... Uh, like a lion so somebody who's quite controlling or quite forthright and you know they know what they want yeah uh, you have the cooperating person who's happy to get on with people that's the monkey mm -hmm. um you have the quite sort of mousy person who will might capitulate to what other people say uh, and you might have the really sort of bad kind of conflict hungry t-rex dinosaur if you see what I mean yep. so you have a lion a monkey a mouse and a dinosaur yeah and all you have to all you have to just simple thing is all you have to um understand is that some people are like that yeah. um and you can probably quite easily work it out in the first couple of minutes yeah what type of person is this and that's all well and good if they're being nice so yeah. if, the, if the controlling lion is just being in charge you know like the vendor is like okay right so I'll take you around the house you know let's start upstairs you know work down you're not going to argue with that it's fine because yeah. they've got a plan and you can think about how you're going to sort of talk to them whilst you're going around. But it's, and, you know, the monkey, you know, they can be, they're, co they're cooperative, they're social, they're warm, they're friendly, respectful. Yeah. Um, the mouse is quite modest, patient, you know, so that's, that's easy. You can, it's obvious stuff. The T-Rex on a good day is just assertive, um, forthright, but critical. But these, these, yeah, people are like this on a good day. So what about on a bad day? Yeah. So on a bad day, uh, yeah, let's say your vendor is just not having a great day or yeah. your estate agent's late. They've got loads of other viewings. You know, they don't like where they work. So what happens if your line is actually quite demanding and rigid? They're not going to be very helpful to you. How do you do it? Well, you, on the wheel, you go the opposite. So if you've got a controlling line, then you are a mouse. And it sounds funny, but you can't have two lines together. Yeah. If you bash up against your um, state agent or your vendor, it won't work. Yeah. And this is this is from people that have done this for years. Yeah. That if they bash up against their counter terror kind of interviewee, it won't work. Yeah. If they're being sort of quite overly in charge and setting the agenda and uh, sorry and being quite rigid and sort of dogmatic and demanding, then you can be modest. You can be humble and you can seek guidance. Now, it sounds quite a weak position to be in, but it's the only way to eventually get to your question. Um, and the same if you get a T-Rex that's like bad, then they're going to be argumentative. You know, they're going to be, you know, sort of competitive, you know. And I, I think the offer price or, you know, the kind of that's often the thing, isn't it? You know, with with uh, vendors and estate agents. So how do you how do you kind of approach a a bad t-rex <laughs> uh now this is this is gonna sound funny but like you got to try and be social and warm and friendly with them you know you you're not going to be over familiar with them but you are yeah. going to you know you are going to try and still talk to them in a kind of in a nice tone if they're just sort of being a bit narky um and you might get a mouse that's just not having a good mouse day <laughs> bad mouse day yeah. yeah exactly you know they happen right so they're bit irritable then they're, they're normally quite nice but they're a bit irritable um and you know they're just not easy to get on with and you as the lion on the opposite side of the wheel you can be supportive you don't yeah. you know not controlling you can be uh conversational you know so it's just 
in the very early part of the conversation, it's like initially you're like, right, this person's a this person's a mouse, okay. Yeah. And all I need to know is what is a what is a bad mouse, okay. <laughs> and then if I know that, then how do I just deal with it? And at the same time, you're kind of like, you know, you're just trying to work through, um, like you know, still doing your active listening. But I mean, in my in my job, in the end, the end goal of this orbit training, it's all about getting information out of people. Now sure. it's just a, just a different context, right? It's yeah. If it's intel for security or defense, it makes no difference. It's it's intel for your property um, sort of portfolio and your your next step. And it's like Nick said to me on the one to one, you're supposed to be gathering intel when you're yeah. here. You know, you'll you'll get very limited intel from email kind of exchanges and the odd clipped phone call. The yeah. most you'll get is when you the, the penny drops, doesn't it? When you meet them and you see what they're like, you see how their mannerisms are. And just quickly work them out. Okay, I've got a monkey. Brilliant. You know, cooperating, state agent, cool. But what if they're a bit over familiar? You know, uh, you know, they're a bit kind of or even a bit desperate with the price. How are you going to deal with that? Well, you know, you can be quite frank and forthright, you know, as a sort of like a nice, nice T-Rex. It's really, it's once you've got it rolling, it's and you do it quite a lot, which let's say you do five viewings in a day and you do a couple of days of them, then you're going to it's like okay. running, the, running the numbers, isn't it? The more you do it, the better you get. And it just becomes natural. And it's just one extra thing, isn't it? Because it's all well and good going into a viewing, knowing that you've got to do 80-20. But what happens when you walk in there and they're just a bit kind of, yeah, the vendors said nothing less than 200. That's the first thing they come out with, which is what happened to us. Yeah. And you're like, okay, wow, all right, that's the, <laughs> the context for this conversation. <laughs> I know because we talk a lot on the three-day training about how um, it's a people business and this is very much all about the people and when people go and view a property they're so obsessed with how much is the refurb going to be and is yeah. the boiler you know recently serviced and actually all yeah. of that is relevant because that can be fixed getting yeah. the deal over the line is the most important aspect of this so getting that intel as you say yeah is, is absolutely vital to get the conversation started. I think what's key is giving the vendor what they want, you know, finding out what mm -hmm. do they want, what's their problem that they need solved, and then using yeah. your knowledge and skills to, to solve that. But this is going to be really uh, helpful for, for your negotiation skills. Have you used it already? Have you got deals over the line having used, used these techniques? Um, yeah, I think so. I think uh, before going into a lot of these viewings, same with the Intel, you do your research beforehand, don't you? So yeah. if you want to know about boilers and things like that, you could just ask it on an email to the state agent. So you haven't got to bother asking those questions in the actual thing. That's what Nick said. Get it yeah. all be done beforehand. Your pre-research, um, you know, Google searches, whatever you can do, which is the same in my world as, as the property. Um, but yeah, um, I suppose uh, these techniques, um, which is rapport building, Definitely. Uh, what helped with the with the house we bought was just you know this is quite a rural area and there's not you know if you go into an estate agent there's one person in there it's not like a an office like there was in Hull where there's like ten people so things are a bit slow so how do you find the right person to talk to who's going to be a good communicator yeah. who's going to be on the money doesn't waste your time uh, and I think you know I just found one uh, yeah um, she t she turned out to be like this he's sort of like one of the owners. Okay. And she took she took the office in Blind Festinio where we were working because someone had like gone off sick and that was great you know similar age uh, also a uh, surveyor just you know gave her a call just got on with her and then that information flowed you know when I had to, we had to deal with the council oh yeah I've got a contact with the council so and then you can go back to her for evaluation DUV whatever but you got to you got to you got to think fast because these viewings don't last very long. So the active listening is really important. Yeah. Um, we can talk about active listening for days and days. Any yeah. other aspects that you thought were helpful yeah. in this course? Yeah, um, so reflection. Um, so that's all part of the orbit thing. Um, so just for little reflection strategies. So um, if you're having a bit of a testy conversation and you're just thinking, right, how am I going to get, I can't think of a way of getting around this. Um, so simple things, just reflect back what they've said. Okay. Um, and it sounds like, oh, where's that going to get you? But it will get you back to where the thing you wanted. So if you're going to reflect back on an offer price or an issue with the house, you know, access or damp, you know, they might want to skirt over that. And you're like, no, 
no, we, we need to nail this on because you're going to try and get me to buy this with a problem and I'm going to, and I'm going to, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to reflect back to you and just use the same keyword phrase, you know, offer, damp, you know, boiler, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, I can say, I can double side reflect. I can say, well, on the one hand, you know, your offer, hard stop of 200. Yeah, okay, I, I, yeah, fair enough. But on the other hand, you know, is that realistic? How long have you had that for? You know, the market's changing. So you're just trying to, you're using what they've said, but yeah. you're then just adding a little bit. You can um, you can reframe something to the way that you want it, you know, and I guess you probably have to go away and think of that of, in a property context as opposed to, you know, defense context, but you can just reframe something and just change the way they've said it to the way that you want it, you know, whatever it is, you know, we found it quite hard to get um, from one of the hotel guest houses. The lady was lovely. He took us around, yep. but she never really gave us the answer to what was the footfall who actually comes here. It was, Oh, you know, pensioners and, you know, um, uh, bus drivers and all right, people that use the theater, but we're like, but Nick was like, what you really want to know is, yeah. you know more more detail than that yeah occupancy so, rate. what's the occupancy rate <laughs> so yeah. that's that's exactly right if you you say occupancy rate that's a good term to use and it's short it's pithy i can say look thank you very much that's brilliant you know like you've obviously got really good um footfall you know and you get and you've got some great repeat guests that you obviously get on with but yep. what is your what's your annual occupancy rate yes and look them in the eye and if you don't get it you don't get it right fair enough if they're not going to give it to you because they don't think in those terms that's a lifestyle business for them they're mm -hmm. living it it's working it and they love the guests and they have the breakfast with them and they have their little chats they're they want to stay below the vat threshold because they can't be bothered with the vat. So yes, it's one, that. a very different way to how we're going to look at it so having that those very long conversations about how lovely everything is to yeah. then try and get to the actual, uh, the, the the detail is quite tricky to bring around. And sometimes we say, oh, we'll just have a wee look at your books. And they always then say, well, I don't really run my books the way I should. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of unfeeling that needs to go on with, uh, with things yeah. like that. You'll have fun with that. It's in that particular one, when you're doing the 80-20, I got on with it pretty quickly and it, and it was like, I'll go straight to like, not personal stuff, but be like, you know, so where are you? you you're, you're, you're leaving this place, you know, you're retiring. You know, she's in her seventies, same age as my mum really. And she's like, oh, just, you know, I'm divorced. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's not great. You know, and then, you know, I've got two children that aren't going to take it on. So you're thinking, well, don't, don't go too hard on this because, yeah. you know, she, she's working this hotel herself. She's, yeah. you know, she's, she's, smashing out long hours she's going up and down stairs all the time you know the the personal life might not be in a great place so just temper what you're and that's when you're doing it in a pair you've got to try and get that across to ben and say hey ben just so you know you know if you're going to like bang on about offer prices she might be thinking you know what i mean but actually she was she was pretty cool but like you know there's very very quickly you know i'll always try and find a, a connection point yeah. uh so with i think the first guy we had his dad had been in the army so it's just a no brainer for me. It, it It's not, you're not trying to, you know, you're, you're genuinely building rapport. You can't, you can't fake that. Like it's, if you don't have the, you know, if you don't have the right questions or you don't engage with somebody, then it doesn't really work. So you, you find what you have in common with them. Um, and it might be that they're like, for me, locally around here, I know some of the same places and, you know, like if I can talk about, the footfall here i know that there's hiking and there's canoeing and all that kind of stuff so you can talk about that because they might do it um yeah, yeah. Like one of the younger estate agents he obviously did that sort of stuff but yeah a bit of i guess it's research uh it's genuine rapport building listening properly yeah. um and then when it gets difficult then you get out your wheel of communication you think right okay and you've already worked out where they are it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly uh, the T the, the, the angry T Rex is a new one on me. Um, I've certainly yeah. seen Jurassic Park enough to know that I don't want to mess with the T Rex. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much for this. This has been amazing, and uh, I love the fact that we've had literally a live build going on in the background yeah. on your house. We can yeah, he's great. He's doing the roof. Away there. <laughs> so the part of this podcast is very real property in live action builders uh, doing it live so thanks so much for your time andy and look 
I can't wait to see uh, your first guest house slash hotel that you're going to nail down. <laughs> um, go big yeah. or go home. Uh, but yeah. I think listeners would have really appreciated your content that you've shared with us today. Great. No, thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Caroline. Take care.